Another frequency-related concept is wavelength. All waves have a physical size, whether they be audio, acoustic, or ocean. This size is called wavelength. One wavelength is the distance between like points on two consecutive waves of the same frequency. In this lesson, we will only consider acoustic wavelengths. In future lessons, I'll show when wavelength must be considered for electrical signals. The acoustic wavelength of 1 kHz is about 1 foot. I'll use this as a reference. Wavelengths get shorter with increasing frequency, having for each octave. They get longer with decreasing frequency, doubling with each octave. As such, low frequency wavelengths can get very long. High frequency wavelengths can get very short. And mid frequency wavelengths are in between. The acoustic effects of rooms and objects is wavelength dependent, which is another way of saying they are frequency dependent. Wavelengths relate these effects to physical size. Wavelength profoundly affects our ability to control where sound does or doesn't go. Concentrating the sound onto a specific area, a property called directivity, requires an acoustic source that is large relative to the wavelengths we desire to control. Control becomes increasingly difficult with decreasing frequency, since low frequency wavelengths can be very long. Pattern control is one of the most useful attributes of a loudspeaker for sound reinforcement. Without it, we're in big trouble. Sound absorption is wavelength dependent. Two inch acoustic panels are good sound absorbers at 8 kHz, a short wavelength. But these same panels are acoustically transparent at 125 Hz, a long wavelength. Since 125 Hz is 6 octaves lower than 8 kHz, the panels would have to be 12 times thicker to have the same effect. This means that low frequencies, or long wavelengths, do pretty much what they please. High frequencies can be concentrated or absorbed quite readily. Mid frequencies represent the transition region between control and no control. Wavelength dramatically affects the way sound waves interact with each other, the environment, and objects. You've heard some of the terms. It's why small rooms can sound boomy at low frequencies. It's why subwoofers can be placed under a stage, but full-range loudspeakers need line of sight to the audience. It's why a vocal mic can have a pattern and why it must be aimed at the talker. It's why you can be in or out of the high-frequency coverage of a loudspeaker. Wavelength is the reason the coverage of your loudspeaker system may have hot and cold spots. The list goes on, but I think you get the point. In acoustics, size matters. In review, audio and acoustic signals are classified based on their level and frequency. The major audio levels are mic level, line level, and loudspeaker level. Depending on their spectral content, audio signals may be low frequency, mid frequency, high frequency, or broadband. The level of a signal is changed by introducing gain or loss. Level changes are often based on the listening process alone and are therefore largely subjective, where beauty is in the ear of the listener. The art of mixing involves achieving a pleasing level balance between the program sources. This is much the same way that an artist blends colors to achieve what they see in their mind. The spectral balance of a signal is modified by a filter. An experienced system operator may use the filters on the channel strip to improve the sound quality of the voice or instrument, a purely subjective process. Most of the knobs on audio gear change either the audio level or spectral balance. This makes the concepts of level, frequency, and wavelength of vital importance in understanding audio systems.